Welcome to Don't Quote Me On That. One day we will have an intro, but today is not that day. Guess who's back? Back again. Shady back. All right. Hello, hello, hello. I'm Kalina. Welcome back to Don't Quote Me On That. We are watching The Bear. I have watched episodes one and two. If you haven't seen those little vlogs, I use the word vlog very lightly because I don't know what I'm doing. But if you haven't seen those, go check them out. Those are the last two weeks episodes. So this week we're reviewing episode three of The Bear, um, as all the other weeks. I've seen a lot of promo lately for stuff Jeremy Allen is in. Like, he's in that movie with Zac Efron, The Iron Claw, I think, about the wrestling brothers. So that's been like popping up on my Twitter feed. Uh, like a GQ article he did, which like, I have a lot of questions about the direction, the concept for the photos. They're good. I just like, separate thing to deal with later. And then the bear, obviously. So all of that said to say, I saw a tweet that was like, quote, tweet tweeting another tweet about the show. And the person was like, let me tell you what this show is. I started watching the show and halfway through, I came home one night and decided I didn't want to watch anything stretch stressful. So I watched a 9-11 documentary and I don't know why, but I laughed at that for a very long time because while some things in the show have stressed me out, like the place being dirty, that's just like a me thing, not so much a show is trying to, the show was trying to stress me out. So I'm really excited to see what I'm getting into in terms of the stress levels the show induces and if a 9-11 documentary would in fact be less stressful and more relaxing to consume. So we'll keep you updated. I've seen a lot of tweets about Jeremy Allen White just in general and how like he needs to stop looking at people like that. It was They posted a clip of him like talking to Sydney and his eyes like he's like smiling his eyes, his eyes get all crinkly so I'm excited to see where that goes. Coming off of that information, actually now that I think about it, I hope there's not like a romance between him and Sydney. I think it would be nice if there's not even, not a will they, won't they, but like, you, you have you always have a friend you've got that sort of like friendly banter with, that it's not going anywhere, it's never going to, but it's nice to have just that sort of relationship on that level. So I hope that's what's in store for Sydney and Carmi, not relationship because one I just feel like a lot of times a relationship is kind of forced down your throat in a show just because we've got a male lead and a female lead so I don't want it to be that too I don't think that makes sense I think they're at different places Sydney's coming to like learn from him so we want to see that relationship develop that sort of mentor mentee relationship that growth that both of them are going to have to do Sydney in terms of in the kitchen and asserting herself in Carmine in sense of being a leader overcoming these these things that are coming down on him this lifestyle that he's like adjusting to that's very is clearly very different from what he's used to and what he's lived the last few years based on what we saw in the last episode with the like rigid the the rigidness and the standard and pressure that his previous job and previous life placed on him for lack of a better word so i'm going to see how this goes i like how they've been kind of changing up the style it's two episodes in to be fair so they've changed the style a couple of times i just said that because i'm looking at the opening shot of this third episode and it looks different again but still in the same family same vein so it doesn't feel like too far removed but it does change how things are filmed and shot just to fit the scenarios that we are experiencing. Anyway, that's where I'm at. I feel like I've talked for a long time, so I'm going to get into the episode. We'll try to check in not too early on, but we've met me. I'm back. I have a blanket on my head. Is that Molly Ringwald? Something about that woman is just... I'm Batman, by the way, guys. 
something about that woman is just so distinct like from this far okay so anyway I remember when i was like i'm not gonna check back in for a little while that was a lie so we get this far away shot and i really enjoyed how so far every episode is opened with like a very different vibe a very different like place and time in carmy's life to be fair the first one opened like with him in the restaurant so like very much present the second episode then opened with like a flashback to the past this one opens like still present but not so much like in the moment as it is when we're in the kitchens or like as it feels then so we see this shot he's like by the water he's he looks really emotional kind of teary-eyed sniffly like me and then you get this like voiceover and then we're we're in this room all of a sudden which very much looks like like a aa sort of meeting like in this case i'm assuming it's the grief counseling meeting his sister invited him to but yeah you see this lady from far away talking and i'm like that's molly ringwald and then we get a close-up of her and it is molly ringwald i'm gonna expose myself here this is how i felt when i saw her in riverdale because i don't know if you guys remember this that woman was in riverdale which is a wild sentence to say. Um, <laughs> Molly Ringwald's character going, I just had to realize that I had to remove myself from any situation that was or could become toxic. Toxic. Cut to Carmi Carmi's face. Immediate cut to Richie in the restaurant yelling, what are you all doing? What the F are you all doing? We're down six dollars in pepper. Blah, blah, blah. Hilarious. Comedic timing. Unparalleled. 10 out of 10. No notes. I don't think I could, like, they're, like, ordering stuff in the restaurant. Well, not there. There's a line of customers in the restaurant. Richie and Sydney are, like, getting into it kind of low-key. Everyone's, like, mad at everyone. Richie's, like, not Richie. Carmi is just, like, trying to make these sandwiches, okay? And I feel like that would be very stressful. I'm, like, I wouldn't want to order food from such a dysfunctional place. But at the same time, little life hack for you all who don't know. Um, I always say that if they're not rude to you at the Jamaican restaurant, the food is not going to be good. And then, like, also, you got to, like, meet them where they're at when you order. You can't be like, can I please get... Because they're, like, they're not going to give you enough rice. They're not going to give you enough gravy from the, what you want. So, little note. If they're rude to you at the Jamaican restaurant, just dish it back out. Within reason. You'll get a full container of food. I think Sydney is great. Love her. 10 out of 10. No notes on her hair. I really like the scene. Uh, so Carmi can't sleep. He comes into the kitchen. Marcus. I think that's the guy's name. If not, forgive me. But uh, the chef is like, has hung up photos of, like some of Carmi's work and things. Or like things Carmi had in his books, which I'm assuming is work he did on the walls and he's like if it's too much i can take it down carmy's like no, no no totally fine like and he's talking to him about one specific photo of some plum dish that took like 12 out 12 people to play like two shifts of watching blah 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 had to make this this gelée that was like jelly haribo jelly consistency and they could never get it right till one day they got it right but as he's like talking through the process and how extensive it was Sydney's like cutting through the frame and it cutting back through the frame and cut, so she's like going back and forth in the kitchen doing her prep but I really like that little element that made it feel like this story was like going on and much more involved than it probably was in the moment if this were a real scenario. But it added just that little bit of like one depth in, in terms of time to the scene, but also depth in terms of it really felt like these two characters were taking a moment out of this hectic space and like taking a moment to bond between like just between the two of them. Uh, and now he's asking sydney to take on some more responsibility and she was like respectfully no i don't want to do whatever he suggested because she said it's gonna be like running a russian gymnastics gym so we'll keep you updated on what that's about totally unrelated has nothing to do with anything i'm obsessed with this jacket they've got um jeremy allen white i was gonna say jeremy michael white not the dead man's name um, i'm obsessed with this jacket they have jeremy allen white in it's so good I just have so much I have so many issues with Tina because I get if you don't like Sydney I get if you don't want to work with her on your team but messing up something she is cooking for the restaurant you are working in for the food you put your 
your face behind, your soul behind. How is that help? If nothing else, how does that serve you? You work at this restaurant. You make your livelihood from this restaurant. If the restaurant doesn't do well, what what are you meant to do? You gotta go find another job, and you are willing to cut off your nose to spite your face that badly, and like, I feel like it, it's setting us up to be misogynistic or like against the woman but i don't think at least as far as i can tell anyone has been so or we have seen at least anyone be so directly and purposefully hostile and counterproductive and targeting one person like richie richie and carmy will yell at each other richie's like i don't like what you're doing but he says it through his face he doesn't do anything to undermine him if he has an issue they'll like save face the other like when they went out to the crowd and Richie went out and shot the gun to quiet the crowd down and keep Carmi from getting beat up. And then in his, like in private, um, Richie was like, listen, that's not the way we run things. You need to do it this way. Tina's just being underhanded. Listen, if you're going to be evil and conniving, do it with your whole chest. Which is to, at times, listen to your boss. I expect more from you. Carmi, you can expect more from her and support a homie. Like, we could have the best of both worlds. Hannah Montana it up in this show. But he, and I get he's dealing with things. He, like, took off. I have a hunch he went to go visit the place or the lady at the very least that um that we saw speaking in Molly Ringwald's character. They saw speaking about, you know, alcoholism, the family disease, those little pamphlets he was looking at. I don't even think I mentioned. Um, meanwhile, Richie was meeting with some shady dude named Nico who called asking for Michael, so... Which kind of threw Carmi for a loop. So, like, I get he's going through it. But I forgot the point of, of why him going through it doesn't matter. Oh, he just kind of left Sydney to fend for herself. He's not supporting her at all. He was like, we're going to try this new thing. I'll be here if you need me. And then took off. I get that it was not in his plan. But he still did it. And doesn't seem to be very understanding or cognizant of the, of the effect that that had on her. And at least specifically in this day. Also, this show is really cool in the fact that, in the sense that it makes it feel like, like a lot of time has passed, these episodes, like, I feel like we've covered a lot of ground, we're all still in the same day. In the last two episodes, we did go over a couple of days, but that almost felt slower paced than this one singular day, so I think they do a really good job of, like, maintaining that pacing in the, and, and changing it as they see fit with the way they shoot things, the, the sort of action, the amount of action, the, the ambiance they condense into the scene. So I think, like, cinematically, cinematography-wise, like, sound, diegetic sound, non-diegetic sound-wise, pulling out all the terms I remember, I think this is, like, a very well-filmed and created and edited show. Sydney's my favorite character, perhaps one of my favorite characters in any show I've seen, because she... While it, it might be hard for her to do, she still does fear face these anxieties. She says what she thinks needs to be said. And she says it nicely and politely. She's never aggressive or in your face about it. When she told Carmi, she was like, you know, today was a really hard day for me. And you kind of, and like, not just kind of, you straight up just left me to deal with this. And I think this could be a really good place if we listen to each other and you didn't listen to me. And she was like, basically, she was like, it's fine if you didn't listen, if you listened to me and didn't agree, but you didn't even give me the time of day. And then just to transition very smoothly into making a joke about, I think, Chef, I think that's a little too personal for you to share. Because he was talking about his fa his brother being um an addict. Which, one, I think we should be allowed to tell people things are too personal to share more often. But, two, I just thought, I think they're building this relationship very nicely and I don't mean that in a romantic sense it's just like the relationship between these two characters very nicely in a very believable way and I think she's a very well-rounded character I think sometimes you'll have a character like this come in you know the 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 trainee the novice the the fresh you know the protege so to speak come in especially when it's a young girl or younger girl and it's very easy to make them naive and timid and you watch them grow into these confident, outspoken people, but she is starting there, 
um, not, not even not so much confident, but she will say what needs to be said. She could build her confidence, sure, but she has enough of a base and enough faith and belief and love for what she does that she's not going to let that stop her. And I think it'd actually be really interesting, now that I think about it, to see her interact in other situations. Like, does she maintain that confidence in her life or put or like in the rest of her life? Or is she more relaxed about things, but because this is her passion, this is what she believes in, this is what she wants to work at, this is where she chooses to invest her energy when it comes to speaking up. Okay, I've just finished the episode. I think it was like nice, short, and sweet. This, um, I don't know if this is the shortest one yet. It was like 28 minutes, give or take. And I can't remember how long the first one was. I know the second one was like more on the 30 minute side, but anyway, not important. It felt nice. I feel like we got like these episodes are short, but we, we get so much character development and so much action, especially in this one. It felt like so much happened, even though it was just like an episode that took place over the course of a day. So I think it's really impressive. And I think that kind of goes back to speak of like the we don't need hour long episodes. Eight, you know, eight episodes. Like we could break it up, have eight episode season that's 30 something episodes. Sorry, 30 something minutes an episode. And like still get a lot of great content. I've heard fantastic reviews of the show before I knew what the like structure was in terms of timing and episode per season and people like swear by this show it's great i think because of how i'm breaking it up like if i were watching it just to watch it i would have watched a couple episodes at a time and i feel like that would have made the story feel a bit more impactful but it feels pretty impactful right now so maybe in the next episode i'll try and do like two of them it's just like getting the time together to watch two episodes even though they're only 30 minutes and then like also record it's a little tough, you know, on that, that nine to five grind, kiddos. I don't know. I think like I've said, like I've, I've checked in with you as I'm watching. So I don't think I like have any theories or like anything needs to be said that I haven't said already. But I would like to theorize a little bit about the opening and closing scenes where Carmi is like by the water. It's like, it's like, or it's either like, not either it's definitely like sunrise so i imagine it was like he came in to work at the restaurant early in the morning because he couldn't sleep we've gone through like this full cycle of a day he's in his little coat he looks kind of it's unclear on what the emotion in his face is but it's definitely a strong emotion he's feeling emotional in some way and then we find out it's michael's birthday so i'm wondering if the water I'm speculating it's either like something that area or that space is something significant between him and Michael, his now dead brother, for those of you who don't remember, or if it's something to do with Michael's passing away that was like significant in that specific event. So we'll check back in when I watch episode four. I'm on episode three. So, episode four, like I said, maybe I'll, I'll try and do two episodes in the next one, see how that goes. And yeah, if you guys are enjoying this, I'm enjoying them. I, like I said, I was probably going to watch this whether I recorded or not. So I enjoy you guys coming along. Appreciate you guys coming along on this journey with me. Um, if you want to, it would be greatly appreciated. You can like, comment, su subscribe here. Or, you know, interact with this however you would interact with things on whatever platform you're consuming this on. Um, if you're checking this out on one platform, I'll tell you, like, we release on YouTube, Spotify, SoundCloud, Apple Podcasts. So wherever you get your podcasts, you can check this out. If you're not doing it on YouTube, you're like missing the video, but I don't think seeing me wear a blanket with Batman on it is like really adding to the experience that much more. So you're fine. I have been Kalina. This has been Don't Quote Me On That. I will see you next week. And please pray for Eleanor's speedy return because... Well, things are just so much more fun when I have her around. And I'm sure you guys would agree. Take care. Thanks for listening. Don't quote me on that. One day we'll have an outro, but it's not today. <laughs>